What's up everybody? Welcome back to another brand new video. <sighs> Help me please. Okay, so I'm very sorry I haven't been here lately. Also, the doorbell just rang, so give me one second, but yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> Whew! Okay, so where was I? Some dude came to the door and he was trying to get me to the mold the lawn because our neighbor is trying to get some cables into the floor. In the ground, sorry. And then I came in and fed the dogs, etc., etc. You already ate your food? So, once again, I'm super duper sorry that I haven't vlogged in a while. Everything was finally going perfect. I had like all these subscribers coming out of nowhere. I had a lot of really good content coming out, and I was super excited. And then the unthinkable happened, guys. My computer broke. Like, not physically like smashed or anything, but like the interface got all messed up. <laughs> He's back. Leave me alone. Let me vlog in peace, guys. So, what ended up happening, why I'm back, is because my dad's laptop, we finally fixed Premiere Pro and Photoshop and things like that onto it. So the first thing I wanted to do is make sure that the programs work, so I made this photo in the backyard uh, yesterday morning. Also, I don't really feel like using my cameras right now. I'm just using my phone. I feel like it'll be a little bit easier to vlog around like this. My dilemma currently, is I can't find the dang keys to the mail. And it's driving me, it's driving me everywhere, like a chauffeur. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, now that you guys know why I've been gone and why I'm finally back, oh my God, I miss you guys so much. I was like deprived of air. It means we should start from the beginning. What's up, miscreants? It is Shy Ms. Rocky back again on the channel, and you guys are watching Fluffy Flamingos. I feel really bad about like my computer failing on me because every year I always try to do a Halloween related thing because I love Halloween, and Halloween is like the easiest thing to make a lot of fun stuff with. I have something really cool to show you guys. Yeah, let's just go upstairs. Oh, all right, we here. I was telling you guys that I have something cool to show you. I have been making my own Sven pads. You guys don't know what that is it's this right here i'll show you what it does so guys like i said i've been making my own spend pads basically it's a notebook and in my case it's about a lot of fall related things so we have pumpkin spice latte and thanksgiving gloves corn maze owl etc right like a lot of different things so what I would have happen is I'd give the notebook to the spectator, they'd pick up anywhere and they'd read the word phantoms. And then I would actually know what word they picked. It's a really cool trick. Um, if you guys know what this is, that's awesome. And if you guys don't, it's basically a Svengali deck turned into a notebook. And if you don't know what a Svengali deck is, it's basically a deck of cards where every other card is shorter than the rest of the deck. So if I flip one way, everything looks normal, like a lot of different words. But if I flip the other way, every other page says phantoms and it forces you to choose that word. So it's a little tedious, but if you actually put the time and effort into this, you get a lot of really awesome reactions. So. All you need to do to make this, and what you're gonna do is I have the first two pages here. You can see that this one has been cut shorter than the one behind it. But thankfully I cut it right on the line so it looks very blended with the back page. But again, it's shorter than the page behind it. So then write the word you wanna force on the short page, phantoms, and then a random word, chocolate. Phantoms, then a random word, phantoms, then a random word, and you just do that all the way throughout. So every other page should be shorter than the rest. So we have all these long pages, and then this way you see all the short pages. Phantom, phantom, phantoms, right? it's all over. Today I'm doing like a birthday party kind of show, and tomorrow, I kind of talked about this already, I'm doing like a bigger show, like the biggest show I've done in two years. But the show tomorrow, I'm not getting paid with money. I'm being paid with two free tickets and free concessions. So that's really good because the whole point of this was to be publicized, right? So it's going well, um, and I'm really excited for the show tomorrow. It's like my first time doing a stage performance. Stage is so different from close up. Let me just tell you that right now. Close up is like with borrowed objects and coins and Sharpies, cards, necklaces, rings, all that stuff, like that's usable. 
but on a stage, I really had to rack my brain for this. I feel like I've been, you guys have been talking to my eyebrows the whole time. But for when you're doing stage and stuff, like you need something like this, but like on a big scale, something that is like more mentalism because not everyone can see what's in your hands. And so when you have an audience member up there, it's literally for like two reasons, so that they can like do the trick with you, but also so that they can confirm what's happening to the audience. I do this and I say, okay, what's the word you're thinking of? He can't just like say it out loud, so I need to make a big notebook. And then let's say I'm doing red pill and he needs to confirm that the card that he's thinking of is missing from the deck of cards. He needs to tell the audience, ah, oh, it's not in the deck anymore. <laughs> it's not in the deck anymore, bro. Where, where'd it go? So you need that guy up there to confirm what's happening in your hands, in their hands, etc. Okay, I'm gonna go find those keys because it's driving me nuts and I I really want to check the mail. It, like, it drives me nuts when I don't check the mail. I don't know why. It's not that I have mail that I'm expecting. It just, I hate when you wait like a week and then you build up all this mail. It just drives me nuts. Let's go see where I can find it. I'm gonna go check all the house, all, all the houses, all the rooms in the house. See if I can hopefully find something. Let's go check the parental room with all the parents in it. Wasn't in there. Let's see, let's see. So I usually come into the house and I either set the mail on, up here or on the table. And I remember the last time I checked the mail, I left it on the table. We also keep the mail keys in here but I'm the only person that ever checks the mail. So it should be in here, bro. But these, these animals, this thing I call family, they just don't know how to stop touching my stuff. Always moving the mail keys around. Sometimes we put miscellaneous crap in here and I'm just hoping the keys are in here. Or not. Dang it. I don't, I don't know where else it could be. <sighs> Boys. Dang, nabbit boy! Yeah, I think it looks good. Also, can I just say my hair looks pretty on point today? Like, aside from this little thing here. I think it looks, I think it looks good. Where did y'all boys hide those dang keys? Two hours later. You know what? I have officially given up. If you guys want mail, you guys are gonna have to go find those keys because I'm kind of done with it. I'm gonna clean the living room really, really quick. And then I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna teach you guys an awesome trick that you guys can learn and take home with you right now. It's not gonna be Halloween related because that like season's pretty much over and I kind of miss my window and I feel kind of bad, but we're still gonna teach you guys something really cool and I hope you guys enjoy it just as much. You guys know how to make a card appear out of thin air. Okay guys, so we're gonna be learning how to produce a card in a very, very fancy way. So this, is what I use specifically for tricks that I want to produce a thought of card. So what I mean by that is they would think of a card in a pack of cards and then they would throw the thought at me and then I would then catch the thought of card. So I'm gonna teach you one way that you can apply this to a trick, one trick that you can apply this to and then I'm going to teach you how to produce the card. So this is how the trick would look. Um, I, I'm gonna skin through the cards like this. I want you to memorize one card that you see the most, but not this one. That's a little obvious and not the top one either. That's still too obvious. So I'm gonna skim through and I'll do that one more time just in case. Yeah, got it? So here's what we're gonna do. I want you to just think of the card that you just thought of. I want you to just picture it nice and boldly in your mind. And on three, I want you to take that thought and throw it at the camera on three. So one, two, three. Just like that. Is that the card you were thinking of? So you guys might be wondering, how did he know what card I was thinking of? So this is a pretty common force known as the sight force. Sight force is very useful, it's very awesome. And this is like the perfect trick to complement that card production. So the way that a sight force works is when I'm doing this, I want you to see one card stand out among the rest. And so the way to go about doing this is to take one card, this is not what they're memorizing by the way, and you just kind of slide it in somewhere into the pack. So this is what it actually looked like in the performance, but I have it in an angle so that you guys can't see. That you wanna hide this, especially when you're in person, you just want the deck to be pointing in their eyes, all right? So in this case, I'm pointing it towards the camera. So I'm going to skim through the cards upward. And so it's key that you don't want them to memorize this card and you don't want them to memorize the top card because it's gonna be too easy for them 
And also, if you say the one that you see the most, obviously it's gonna be this one. So you wanna make it a little bit more complicated. And that way it'll force them to choose something in the middle. So when you're going up, what this card in the center does is it gives it a split second more. It gives it a little bit of a longer chance for you to see it. So in this case, we would be memorizing the five of hearts. So from there, once they memorize a card, all you're gonna do is you're going to cut the pack, but you're, gonna, you're not gonna cut it quite at that card that's sticking out. You're gonna riffle up one card and you're gonna cut there. So that way their card will actually be on top. All you really need to know is that you need to get it into palm. And so if you don't know about the palm, it's only really ever happening in the pinky and the flesh of your thumb. So just like that, these three fingers are pretty loose and limber. They can move around, but preferably not so that they don't see the card. But in order to get it ready for the production, you need to buckle it out like a bubble. And the way you're gonna be doing this is you're actually gonna pull back with your pinky and you're gonna flex out with your palm and that's gonna create that bubble. Now the reason you're gonna be doing this is because you're going to be grabbing it with your index and thumb. And that's what makes that production look so flashy. Now a couple of tips to make sure that this looks extra at the tip of your finger, because the, if, you, if you do this, that's, it looks pretty lame. But if you do it at your fingertips, it looks like fairly out of thin air. So once again, just like that. So the tip I'm gonna give you is that when you're doing this, um, you want to make sure that it's facing them pretty parallel. So you don't want it to be like this, like obviously that's not great. If you do it perpendicular, it's gonna look really sucky. If you do it here, it's not gonna look great. So the more that, that your wrist is hung out that way, like you're giving them something, that's the ideal angle to look at it. And the other tip is instead of just doing that, you wanna spread your fingers out. So this is without the spread of the fingers. And this is with the spread of the fingers. And I think it's just a really great way to produce a card. It's fairly simple, very easy to learn. So one quick recap, you're just gonna be palming it and you're gonna buckle. And then you're going to use your index finger and your thumb to grab it. And so in the motion of grabbing it, the bottom is naturally gonna fly out just like that. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll see if I can get some footage about my stage performance. And if not, that's totally fine. And we'll find something else to do. But thank you guys so much for watching Fluffy Flamingos. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.